Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Faithful Love Fellowship. We're delighted to have you. We call this the Hour of Power. And the reason we do that is because we're spending time with God. And whenever we spend time with God, it's, it's powerful. Amen. God's power is displayed. He shows himself real in our lives. He speaks to us through his word, through his Holy Spirit. We're encouraged, we're exhorted, we're, we're, we're comforted, amen. And uh, I, I want to get back into our study, but just a moment, I wanted to share my heart a little bit with you to encourage you, amen. We are all going through times that none of us have been through before, the time in which we're living. It seems that so many things are, are uh, upside down, but... We must remember as Christians that our faith is in God, amen, and uh, in him we trust, and we're not to be moved. Uh, don't spend a lot of time listening to what people are saying. Don't spend a lot of time uh, allowing fear and, and worry and, and you, know, you know, let me Google this to find out about it. Let me Google that. No, no, no. Spend the time that you would normally spend fretting and worrying and in the Word of God. Google the Word of God. Google God's faithfulness. Google God's uh, ability to keep us and hold us and, and, and heal us and strengthen us and, and, and fix your heart and mind on the Word of God. Amen. Don't let your heart be troubled. I said it before. Don't do it. Amen. Uh, don't let your heart be troubled. Uh, we are in, in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God uh, operates completely differently from the, the kingdom of the world. And we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. So, so be encouraged and, and, and be comforted and, and, and keep your heart with all diligence. Amen. And, uh, and it's going to be required now to keep your heart with all diligence and speak the word only. Don't let your mind stray, go right and left. No, the word of God says don't turn to the left or to the right. Amen. Fix your eyes, fix your heart, look unto Jesus. He's the author, he's the finisher, and he will do what he says he will do, and that is to keep you in perfect peace whose hearts and minds are fixed on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to continue in our study. Um, we're uh, ministering from, from our home computer. I have a split screen, so I'm going to be reading the scriptures as we go right along. But um, we're going to start again in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I believe we got to about chapter 9, verse 8, verse 9. We'll review quickly and then move forward from here. Let's pray together, okay? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for every opportunity that we have to be together with you and people of like precious faith, my brothers and my sisters that are out, that are watching here on Facebook and uh, later on maybe on YouTube. Lord, we honor you and, pra and praise you for the opportunity to come into their homes, into their lives and encourage them, to build them up, to strengthen them and to help them to see uh, what you would have them to see. And we are so thankful, so very grateful. Be with all of those who are struggling tonight be with all of those who are who are hurting in any way, shape, or form tonight. We trust, Lord, that you will prove yourself strong on their behalf as we join our faith together and say to those that are sick, be healed, to those that are lonely, that the presence of God would fill that place where they are. Lord, thank you for praise reports in the in the midst of, of, of uh, all the things that we hear negative. God is doing marvelous things on the earth. People are being saved. People are being healed. The powers of darkness are being are being stopped the plan of god is moving forward the devil is a liar he's already defeated that jesus christ is lord father and we are on the winning team and we shout glory and praise and honor to you and you alone O oh god for you deserve it all to the glory of god in jesus name amen god bless you my brothers and sisters hallelujah swell we're talking about, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul is speaking about giving and receiving. Amen. Specifically, he's he's talking about the church of, of Corinth, that they um, remember that part of Christianity is to be a blessing. Amen. And so they are going on to Macedonia, uh, a region that up to this point has been untouched with the gospel. And the folks there can't afford to have them come. So the Apostle Paul is reminding the Corinthian church that they are counting on their 
generosity and, and liberality to be able to go and to bring the glorious gospel to the people of Macedonia and beyond. And so what an honor it is. The word of God says that we work together with the Lord. The Lord uh, uh, is, is always going, looking to work with us. He doesn't send us to work on our own, but he goes before us and he, he goes with us and he's our rear guard. Amen. And his presence lingers and, and continues to bless people and continues to, to uh, feed people. And the word of God says some sow and, and, and some water, but God gives the increase. So God stays and, and he builds and, and he continues to work on, on the, the work that has been done in the hearts of people. Amen. And uh, so by the grace of God, our aren't you glad that's the way he operates so he uh he continues and he tells them uh let's see in uh, in verse um uh verse five therefore i thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty whereof you had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty, not as of covetousness. So he said, you know, I've given you plenty of notice to, to lay aside uh, offerings and to prepare to give, and and we're going to give so that others might hear the gospel. Amen. It has nothing to do with covetousness. It's not for me. It's not to spend on my own self and for my own uh, purposes or my own desires, but it is to sow uh, so that we might be able to go and bring this gospel to others as well. Verse 6, he says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And I always liken it unto depending on the measure that you give. It's going to say it in just a moment, but it depends on the measure you give. And 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 God is a is a is a lavish giver. Amen. He is a very generous giver. When uh, when he thinks about giving, he doesn't give any time small. He never gives with reservation. He gives the best he has. He gives he and you know he's a good father. And usually, in my experience, good fathers will give their children the better than what they will take. It gives them pleasure. They're not sacrificing. They don't feel like they're sacrificing. They're, it gives them pleasure to give their children the best that they have. And our, we get that from our Father. Amen. Our Heavenly Father gives His children the best that He has. He doesn't withhold, the Bible says, He withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly before Him. So He's not withholding. Amen. He's giving and he's a lavish giver. And, and I've told you all oh, many times by now, but the Bible says be imitators of God. And he loves when his children imitate him. When we are lavish givers, amen, when we are faithful givers, when we, when we are quick to do it, not drag our feet or, or grudging of necessity, but we are quick and we are generous and we are uh, faithful. Amen. And so uh, notice it says here, but this I say, verse 6, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And, and so this says to us that it's our choice. We make the decision whether we're going to reap sparingly or whether we are going to uh, reap bountifully. And, uh, and it's according to what we use as a measure, basically, in our giving. Amen? Uh, I, I have said before, if we use a thimble to give, whether whether it be not only finances, money is one part of it, but give kindness, give mercy, understanding, patience. If we use a thimble as a measure, I'm going to give you, you know, you got like six seconds and then my patience is over and, and I'm done. You know, if that's what we use, then that's what's going to be used on our behalf. But if we give generously and liberally, if we use a, you know, a, a much larger uh, vessel as a capacity, uh, you know, uh, headed towards maybe a dump truck, uh, hey, man, how many here want to receive dump truck blessings in your life? Amen. And so it doesn't just come automatically. You have the same measure that you measure is the measure that will be used on your behalf. So you see, it says this, I say, verse six, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, but he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, or women, right? Uh, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Now, we are talking about finances, and it takes finances to do the work of the ministry, but it also covers every other area of godliness in our lives. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver of, of patience, of mercy, of kindness, of, of, uh, of forgiveness, of, and, and the list goes on and on. Hallelujah. And and, and try to, to, to remember always with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back unto you. And so we certainly want, a, you know, a, 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 a large measure of patience towards us and, and mercy and, and kindness and grace and blessing. And the list goes on and on. Hallelujah. So uh, notice what it says. And here's the blessing. Here's, here's, the, here's the fact that follows uh, that statement. Uh, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. So again, yes, finances, but it's more than finances. Think about it. All the things that, 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 that make a, a life worth, worth living, kindness and goodness and, and mercy and grace and, and patience and, 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 and blessing. But, what, you know, blessing from our mouths, blessing in our attitudes. Uh, it says here, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all these things, right, may abound to every good work. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. And so always check your heart and make sure that you're a cheerful giver and make sure that you're, the measure that you give is a big, is a big measure. Amen. Uh, there's lots of measures. The, my my girls are baking tonight, and you know you have you have a teaspoon, you have a tablespoon, you have a half a cup, you have a cup, and the list goes on and on. And you have a liter, and then you have a half a gallon, you have a gallon, and you understand, my brothers and sisters. I, I believe you do. So notice what it says, verse nine. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad; he hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. God is well aware of your faithfulness, and when you are a cheerful giver, it is righteousness. It is, an, it is the act of you being righteous, doing what is right in God's sight, and, and it's something that, that endures. It's something that, that will stay long after the act of kindness, whatever it was, whether it was finances or whatever it may have been. And it will actually continue uh, even long after you have left this planet. Amen. Your righteousness remains forever. God takes note of, of these things and, and it becomes part of our heritage, part of, of what we will leave behind uh, and what a blessing. And how many would rather leave behind that kind of thing than, than leave behind some of these other things that, that uh, uh, you know, I, I, I shudder to think of, of some of the things that people uh, will leave behind. Um, uh, pain and, and hurt and discord and, and anger and frustration and, and bitterness and the list goes on and on. Uh, I'd rather uh, my righteousness remain forever. How about you? Amen. So uh, now verse 10, now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So of course, this is God. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. It's threefold if you really look at it. He says, now he that ministers seed to the sower, and we've said God gives seed to the sower. Uh, God uh, is looking for sowers. Again, we are talking finances, but I don't want you to just focus it only on finances. I want you to think about it in the broader sense. 
all the things of, of righteousness, all that pertains to life and godliness uh, and uh, respect and, and integrity and accountability. And I mean, all these things, faithfulness and, and patience and mercy. And like I said, uh, notice what it says here. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, he, he's looking for sowers of all these things so that he might minister seed, put things in your hands so that you can sow it. And he will watch over his word. When he sees you sow, he will give abundantly more because he knows you are trustworthy and he knows that you will, you will uh, use it for the blessing of, of uh, others, of humanity. Hallelujah. Now notice it says, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Okay. So it's going to take care of you then and multiply your seed sown, which means increase in your life and increase the fruits of your righteousness, the impact that that you're that you're giving uh, uh, makes in the in the earth, the fruits of your righteousness. So not only minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown, which is to bring in more. Uh, so there'll be abundance that you can continue to give, but also it says an increase the fruits of your righteousness, the results of, of your actions. And wow. Amen. Verse 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. So I love the, I told you before, I love the, the, um, the absolutes of the word of God. It helps me to know where I stand. And when the Word of God says all and everything and 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 uh, and uh, nothing or never, those are absolutes. And and I I I can see there's no gray area. Hallelujah. Uh, he says all grace abound towards you, which means there's there. It's it's not some grace. It's not most of it. It's not it's not the majority of it. It's all of it. Amen. So I can get a clear picture and I can understand when, when the word of God says that he will never leave you, never fail you, never forsake you. I mean, it tells me that there, there's no time at all. What does never mean? Me, never means never. Well, what about two o'clock in the morning? Never. What about, you know, when, when I'm troubled and, and I got myself into this mess myself? Never means never. Hallelujah. And so, I, I, as I said, I love the absolutes of the Word of God because it helps us to understand where we stand. Glory to God. And, uh, and where we stand is in, a, is in a good place. Hallelujah. Because we are standing on a sure foundation uh, of faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So, uh, he continues and he says here, being enriched in verse 11, in everything, being enriched in everything, to all bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God, being enriched in everything, to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. When we are faithful and when we are lavish with our giving, it brings thanksgiving to God through the people that we minister to. Somebody who, who, who needs somebody to come alongside them and just show kindness to them. Uh, if you make up your mind that I'm going to be that person, because if Jesus was here, he would be that person. And I am Jesus' representative, and so I'm going to be that person. And the end result will be through the individual you bless or help, thanksgiving to God. Amen? And wow, that that is that is. That's what it's all about, my brothers and sisters. That, that's what it's all about. It says, verse 12, for the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So all these people in Macedonia are going to hear the gospel. They're going to be reached. People are going to be saved. Families are going to be restored. Sick are going to be healed. Those that are in bondage, those bondages are going to be broken. Demonic activity is going to be stopped. The curse is going to be reversed. And blessing was, is going to come upon these people. Glory to God. And notice what he says, For the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. And you get a part in that. Amen? 
When people say, you know, Lord, I don't know who blessed me, but please bless them. I'm not sure who helped me. I don't really know who was involved in, in, in doing uh, this kindness for me, but whoever they are, bless them. And I want you to know, I thank you for sending them into my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the administration of this service, verse 12, not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. Hallelujah. It's an interesting choice of words there. It says they glorify God for your professed, professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. Did you know that subjection to the gospel of Christ is not just lip service. There must be works. There must be actions. You remember the expression, actions speak louder than words? Well, this is what he's talking about. Amen. While by the experiment of, experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel. Not only, you know, words, but, but, but substance, but but reality, genuineness, amen, integrity, hallelujah. And, uh, and, uh, and it says in verse 14, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. So they are genuinely thankful for, for your influence in their life in whatever capacity. And, and they, they long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Lord, I pray, bless that person. They blessed me. I, they blessed me so much. And they blessed my family. And, and Lord, we're just, we come together and we ask, Lord, bless them. Be with them. Strengthen them. May they never have a time where they don't have more than enough. Wow, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Then it says here, and um, verse 15, thanks be to God, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Glory to God. We can never forget that, that the Lord has given us the greatest gift of all, his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as, <coughs> excuse me, and as we uh, think about him and, and, and we, we meditate on him, uh, we are encouraged, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's continue on. We have a little more time, so let's go into 2 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? Amen. Uh, Paul is uh, quite the father uh, to the churches, and he speaks to them like a father. Uh, he brings encouragement. He brings comfort. He brings um, admonition. Uh, at times, if he has to, he brings correction. But it's never with a, a bitter or a hard uh, motive. The motive is always love and for the benefit of his spiritual children. Amen. So chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, Paul is speaking. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So he, he's saying, I'm going to be, you know, I'm meek when I'm with you. And, uh, but I, I need to bring some things to your attention. And in letter form, I can be bold. Uh, one reason, you know, we can be a little bold in letter form because we don't see the people that we're talking to. Uh, and especially if we need to, um, confrontation, nobody likes confrontation. Uh, and, and so uh, when there needs to be confrontation, how many know it's easy to do it, uh, a text message? It's easy to do it from a distance rather than do it face to face. But it's better to do it face to face. Uh, that way that there's no mis misunderstandings and uh, there's uh, people don't say, well, what did you mean by that or, or uh, that kind of a thing? 
I'm not one for drama my, myself. I, I, uh, I've seen too many people hurt because of, of drama. Uh, what do you mean by that? And, uh, and uh, you know, that all kinds of stuff. So I like face to face. I like to make sure that that we're it's all out in the open and we're good when everything is said and done and we can move on. I, I personally it's personal part of my my personality. I, I'm one to forgive and forget. Uh, once I forget, once I forgive, I forget and I move on. I, I'm not going to linger. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to harbor it in my heart. I don't believe God uh, is pleased when I, when we do that. So uh, here the Apostle Paul is going to bring some, some correction because it says in verse 2, I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For, this, for, the, for his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. So what's happening? We can, we can read the whole portion of scripture, uh, but I want to help you to understand what's going on and to see what is happening here. Now, there's always going to be people that are going to uh, judge according to uh, themselves. Uh, you know, I, I've heard people who are not faithful people are very quick to be suspicious of other people's faithfulness. Uh, I have uh, found in many cases people who are who are uh, have no integrity uh, are very uh, distrusting of everybody else, uh, and so. But that doesn't uh, that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives. Amen. Uh, and so the apostle Paul is is telling us that we are not to walk in the flesh; we are to walk in the spirit. And that we are to see one another by the Spirit, Hallelujah! And and we can tell uh, whether a person is is genuine or not. Uh, and uh, and the Apostle Paul is reminding the Corinthian church that he has been nothing but transparent and and uh, genuine, Hallelujah! And, and yet there are some that are uh, that are bad mouthing him that are that are showing or, or making a, a an open display that he's not to be trusted that that he uh, that his words are are, are are not the word of God and and that he's uh, he's as it said his his bodily presence is weak. No, don't misunderstand. You know, meekness for weakness. Meekness is teachable. Amen. Uh, uh, there are many times I, I even know in my own heart and in my own ministry that sometimes I close my eyes and, and more times than not, it, I'm listening. Amen. I'm listening for what the Holy Spirit would, would say, what he would have me to say. Uh, I'm not going to just talk to you whatever I think. I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm not going to, well, this is my slant on this whole thing. God forbid. And, and so there are times that I'm actually listening because I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And that's what I want to bring to you. And, and so here, you know, the Apostle Paul is he you know he's he's speaking by revelation the the man was used by god to to pretty much preach most of, uh, quite a bit of the new testament and to write it down so i mean he's proven himself to be trustworthy 
Hallelujah. And uh, and he and uh, again, he he's why do you need to be uh, 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 angry and and uh, have your defenses up when you're talking to your children? You shouldn't have to. Uh, you should be able to let your hair down, so to speak, and and know that they they love you and they accept you and and uh, and they welcome you, but yet they respect you. And uh, and but there is always going to be some who are going to what Paul calls thorns in the flesh. Uh, no disrespect. Don't get mad at me, but we call them PIA. I hope you understand. Anyway, uh, let's move forward. Um, anyway, let's. Uh, so let's see what it says here. It goes on and it says, uh, but I beseech you in verse two, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Now he's going to continue, verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We war in the Spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now I'm going to talk about this from a kind of a different point of view. We've preached about it before, but I want to repeat it, not make it too long for you. But most error we make is when we think on things that pop into our mind, or we think about what somebody else says, or we think about what somebody else does. And uh, what happens is many times the enemy gets into our thoughts and we begin to think the wrong thing. We start thinking about resentment. We start thinking about, you know, I've been forsaken. I've been wronged. Um, uh, I, I, I should have been treated this way and, and I need to have uh, revenge on you. I need, to, I need to make it right. I need to do what I need to do and, and make sure it never happens again. And, it, and it's all operating in the flesh, in the, in the mind, in the world's way of doing things. And that's not who we are. We are called to live in the Spirit based on the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Amen. How many times should we forgive our brother if they are genuinely sorry? Seven times? No, Jesus said seven times 70. In other words, have a forgiving nature. Amen. That's not being foolish, not being fooled, easily tricked. It says if your brother is genuinely sorry, forgive them. If they're not genuinely sorry, then you need to confront them and let them know that your actions are affecting me. And if you don't change your actions, then our relationship is going to take a break until you make up your mind you're going to do things right. Because I will not let your this situation affect me. If you're going to be unrighteous in your business dealings, then we're going to separate because I'm going to be righteous in my business dealings. If you're going to allow stress and strife in your life, then tell you the honest truth, I don't want to hear about it because I don't want strife and stress in my life. So, you know, we have to make some hard choices at time, okay? And though it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So it's not about fist fights. It's not about, you know, let's see who's going to come out on top. And, you know, I'm going to flatten your tires because you did this or whatever. Or I'm never going to talk to you again. No, I never said don't talk to them, but confront them. If they're genuinely and truly sorry, then they repent and then you forgive them. But if they refuse, then you're going to have to let them know that then, then this relationship is going to take a, a little bit of a break because I, we're not going in the same direction. And I'm not going where you're going. Amen. I'm just not willing to do it. So anyway, it goes on here and he, and he begins to talk, talk about what, what I like to say is, is the beginning of, of uh, problems in our lives are, are our thoughts, are what we think about. Uh, I have said before that if you think about something that's negative, whatever it is, could be jealousy, could be lust, it could be the list goes on and on and on, and you the thought pops into your mind, whether it comes out of your own you know mind or whether the devil 
you know, plants thoughts in your mind, you know, oh, he wronged you. If, if I were you, you know, I would do this. And you say, you know what, you're right. And, and you, you've all had the conversations, I'm sure. Well, what happens, God says that we are to take that thought captive. The very time it comes, we are to take that thought captive. Because if we don't take that thought captive, then it will begin to grow and it will begin to fester. And it will begin to, to become more, uh, um, you know, um, in our face, so to speak. Uh, so what winds up happening, unfortunately, is, is uh, things pop into our mind based on uh, old way of thinking, the flesh, what people say, how it affects us. We live in, with our feelings on our, you know, on our sleeves, our emotions on our sleeves. We're not called to be emotional people. We're called to be spiritual people. We're called to be rooted and grounded in the love of God, amen, and, and not live by our emotions or live by our own thoughts. Don't, you know, he, he says to us uh, that we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Trust not in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, amen. Lean not on your own understanding. So what happens when we make the mistake and we lean on our own understanding? What happens, it becomes an imagination. And we think about it, and we go to bed thinking about it. He wronged me, or or she said something to me, or or that other person flirted with me, and and they they thought I was uh, nice or whatever, handsome or nice looking, whatever. And the thought just it becomes you know a thought. The devil puts a thought, it pops into our mind. Others, somebody else says something, and it puts a thought in our mind. And if we don't realize that it is a it is a thought that is destructive, it's a thought that's not going to end well, and we don't stop it immediately, like a police officer arrests a criminal, then that criminal is going to continue to do uh, unlawful acts. Uh, uh, the, the best thing to do is arrest them, get them off uh, the street, so to speak. You with me? The same thing with thoughts. We're supposed to arrest them and stop them. But what happens, verse 5, if we don't, it becomes an imagination. And if we don't uh, do anything about it, it becomes a high thing. And then it even exalts itself in against the knowledge of God. Yeah, I know what God says, but. I know what I'm supposed to do, but. I know what's right and what's wrong, but. And this is where it happens. It, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, amen, then it says, it, and then it becomes, it becomes you know, a, 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 uh, a stronghold in the end of chapter 4. So it becomes something now that we can't think of anything else. Now it becomes all we're thinking about, it becomes a, a complete preoccupation. Uh, now, it, now we can't think of anything else. It's the most important thing. And, and and now we're in a real we're in a real trouble here because that's when big mistakes happen. Like when people, I mean, divorces happen, suicide happens, all kinds of things. Why? Because we let a thought just continue to grow to be a to be an you know a a a, a consideration, a preoccupation, an imagination, a fascination, and eventually it becomes a stronghold. Yes. But listen, and I love this because God knows, and he, and he has done what is necessary. Hallelujah. Notice what it says here. For though we walk, in verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of this world. They're not for worldly use. They're not for, for people. It says, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. God doesn't start from the bottom up. God starts from the top down. And he's letting you know that you have weapons and that these weapons are mighty through God to pull down these strongholds, that there's, that there's victory, amen, from these strongholds. Hallelujah. He says, cast, then he continues down the process, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought 
to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So it starts with obedience and it ends with obedience. Amen. See what God says is a good thought and think those. And if God says it's not a good thought, then take them captive as soon as they come. Immediately as soon as they come. Well, you know, some of the guys are going out and, you know, it's been a long time since I go, but you better catch that thought and, 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 and uh, arrest that thought because it's not going to end well. You know, well, there's a girl in work and she keeps smiling at me and flirting with me, and, and, you know, but I have a ring on my finger. You know what, my brother, my sisters, because ladies the same way, you know, you better take that thought captive or you're, or you're going to see destruction in every area of your life. So, so just make up your mind. No, oh, no, no, that is not who I am. Right. Hallelujah. Joseph uh, of old was uh, was. Uh, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him and, and he had nothing to do with it. He says, no, 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 I will not do that against my master Potiphar. And he ran. And sometimes you're going to have to run, my brothers and sisters. You're going to have to run. And don't think, oh, it's strange. See a grown man running. You better run. To see a grown woman run, you better run. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because we don't walk in the flesh. And we do not war in the flesh, but we have to strive in a matter of speaking to walk in the spirit. We have to make up our minds, I'm going to walk in the spirit. And if it means I got to run, then I'm going to run, whether in my flesh, whether in my, you know, physically run, mentally run, emotionally run, whatever it may be. Amen. You with me, my brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. So he's, there's hope. If you feel as though, you know, it's got to the point where it's all I think about, no, the rest of it. No, you need to just simply change your thinking. And, and you need to say, you know, Lord, thank you for your word. That by your word, strongholds are broken off of my life. That I have a different way of seeing things. And the best way to see is to see from God's point of view. Amen. Hallelujah. How can we hold somebody in 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 unforgiveness when god has forgiven us amen and the story of the man who wouldn't forgive you remember the the the, the king forgave him a huge debt then he would not forgive someone else we need to forgive based on the what we have been forgiven of so there's nothing anybody can do to us that we can hold in unforgiveness after what the Lord has forgiven us about. Amen. So hallelujah. And, uh, and we got to do it by faith. There are many times I've heard people say, I just can't do it. You know, I can't forgive my mother-in-law. I can't forgive this. I can't forget that. Or, and he did this and she did that. And sometimes you just got to do it by faith. You got to say, Heavenly Father, I know it doesn't please you for me to hate my mother-in-law. And so by faith, I'm just going to say, I don't hate my mother-in-law. And I'm going to just forgive her. Uh, you know, you know, my brothers and sisters, I've, I've said it before, but bitterness and things like that, they affect you more than they affect the other people. There are people that have wronged you and you have bitterness toward them and they could care less, but it's affecting you. And, and so God wants you to be free. And so do it by faith. Father, I just forget. I just cast my care. I just say, no, I'm not going to hold this thing. I'm just not going to think about it. I refuse to think about it. Right. And if I and if I have to still be involved in that person's life, then I'm going to do it in your strength and I'm going to do it in your but with grace in my heart. And I'm not going to be hold resentment. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to hold take them thoughts captive because they're they, I'm not going to let the devil win. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to let the devil into my heart, into my mind, into my life. I'm not going to think those things, those thoughts and allow those things to dominate my life. Amen. You and you alone deserve that position in my life. Amen. And, and, and God will come to your aid and God will come to your aid. And then pray for your mother-in-law. Pray, as I've said before, pray the two prayers in Ephesians, the prayer in Colossians, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Colossians. Amen. They're on our website, www.fwlf.com. Go to our sermon page. I've, my, my son, God bless him, has posted them up there for us so you can have them. 
Pray them over people. Amen. Pray them over people who are who you struggle with, people who, who just don't seem to get it, people who have who have hurt you, have wronged you. Amen. The Bible says that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, that we are to do good unto those that even despitefully use us. And the best way of doing good is to pray for them. Allow God to move on their in their life. That God will bring the, the light. And, and, and one day, you might see it, you might not. They'll come and they'll say, you know, I never realized. I never saw the depth of it. You might not ever hear it. You might. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So now notice again, it says here, Verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So as I said, it begins with obedience, it ends with obedience. Obedience is the key. The word of God has been given to us. All that pertains to life and godliness. Joshua 1.8 says that we are to meditate on it night and day that we are to think about it, we are to speak it, we are to, to allow it to become the, 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 the vision before our eyes. And then he says that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, obedience. He says, then, and only then, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success from God's point of view. Amen? It might be hard. You might say, this is hard. Yeah, it is. But anything worth pursuing sometimes is hard. Glory to God. But afterwards, you realize it was all worth it. Glory to God. To honor God, that he might be pleased with you and the choices you make. Hallelujah. Regardless of, of what other people do or say, how it, how it affects you is, is most important. Amen. So that you might continue to be blessed, be a blessing have a, a, a an imitator of Christ, merciful, kind-hearted, integrity, genuine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So he goes on. He says, um, verse 7, Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we. Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Right? I could speak with authority because uh, God has given me the authority, the Apostle Paul is saying. Uh, but remember, it's not for your destruction. It, it's for your well, it's for your well-being. Verse 9, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we also be indeed when we are present. Let such a one think this. Let, let people think what they want to think. You're not held accountable for what other people think, what other people do. You're only accountable for what you do. Amen? And, and how you react. God wants us to, to act godly and to react godly, to do what's right in his sight. Uh, that's, that's what you have control over. You don't necessarily have control over whether people are going to like it or not. Amen? Uh, and, and uh, you know, welcome to the club. Uh, the Apostle Paul is is saying that, you know, that that uh, there are those that are just going to, they're not going to receive it. They're not going to want it. And I know we're human beings and we want everybody to like us and we want everybody, but it's just, it just uh, doesn't always work that way. I'm sorry to tell you. So he goes on and he says here, uh, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. I'll say it again. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but 
they're me they measure themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 16, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, He's talking to the church of Corinth, and he's reminding them, our mandate is to preach the gospel to every creature, to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick, freely we receive, freely give. We will not be distracted. We will not be offended. We will not, you know, be paralyzed by looking at the fear, of looking in the past all the time. We're not going to let fear intimidate us. We've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We have been commissioned by Almighty God. We, we're going to obey. We're going to obey. We're going to obey. Amen. That is, that is the, the will of God. Glory to God. We're going to keep our hearts with all diligence, like the word says. We're not going to allow our hearts to be troubled. We're not going to war by in the flesh. We're not going to see people by the flesh. Uh, we're not going to retaliate. We're going to uh, we're going to do what the word says. We're going to do uh, as the word says. Hallelujah! It, it says verse seventeen. But he or she that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Now, God sees everything, my brothers and sisters. So, you know, we don't have to commend ourselves. We don't have to justify ourselves and say, you know, uh, uh, you know, how good we are, how great we are. God will commend us. Amen. God has a way of letting us know uh, we're doing what, what he wants us to do and he's pleased by it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, verse chapter 11, we'll pick up, we'll just do a little bit more and we'll break for tonight. He goes on, he says here, would you, would to God you bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. Verse two, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest, chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself, that ye may be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. Amen? Hallelujah. And so he's encouraging them, and he's, he's, he's letting them know that our relationship is, is a genuine relationship. It's not based on what's in it for me. It's based on what's in it for you. And, uh, and he says, not everybody who comes along has that motive. Not everybody who, who comes along has that, has that intent. Hallelujah. Uh, and he's saying, you know, uh, the, the gospel is simple. It's not complicated. It's not uh, too deep for us to, to comprehend or too hard for us to, to, to walk out. No, it's, it's very simple. Amen. It's to hearken diligently unto the word of God and observe to do it based on a relationship, 
based on a relationship that you and I have been invited into. We don't do what we do because we have to. We do what we do because we love God. Amen? And it honors him and it blesses him. And it's what he would have us do. And, and it's and it's it brings him joy when he sees us doing what he's what he's encouraged us to do. And so with all the strength in us, we we're gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna walk that. That's the way we're gonna walk. That's the way we're gonna live. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, my time is getting away from me, and I want to leave a little time to pray with you. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. And uh, we are having a eight o'clock service at the church uh, for Christmas Eve. We will broadcast it on Facebook, on Periscope, and uh, we encourage you to join with us. We're going to sing. It's going to be a beautiful Christmas message, and uh, we're going to enjoy uh, our ourselves. We will not have a Christmas Day service, but we will be in church on Sunday morning and uh, worshiping God and continuing uh, to encourage the saints and bless the saints. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this and every opportunity we have to come together and be together. Uh, let the, the word of the Lord uh, ring in the hearts of your people, O God, uh, that we would, uh, we would hear and we would obey. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the grace, the ability to do what you have called us to do. We thank you for supernatural strength and health and healing and blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we have the mind of Christ, that we think clear, that we think accurate in the name of Jesus. Thank you for peace in our homes. Thank you for, for the, 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 the life of God that has been imparted in each and every one of us who've called upon the name of the Lord and are saved. Thank you for the sweet spirit of, of God in every home, in, in every place where people come together, where my brothers and sisters are, are, uh, are right now. And uh, Father, we thank you for a true, very true and meaningful uh, Christmas as we uh, gather with friends and family as we're able to, or even as there might be those that are alone. We're never alone because you are always there. You will never fail us, never forsake us. We can sit even in one individual, sit and in in, in look at a, a, the tiniest little manger, whatever it may be, something we even handcrafted and begin just honor God for the birth of his son. And, and, and remember that we are the gifts. The wise men of old brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. We, we are the gifts. We present our lives. We present ourselves holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And Lord, it doesn't matter if there's pomp and circumstance, doesn't matter if there's if there's a Christmas tree or no Christmas tree, doesn't matter if there's presents or no presents. We have already received the greatest present, the greatest gift, the indescribable gift of our of our Savior and our Lord, our precious Jesus. We honor you, we praise you. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord, and, and each and every one of us, Lord, as we uh we just rejoice in the in the gift of God. And we bless and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow night, as I said, is Christmas Eve. Uh, Nick will preach on Friday night, I believe, for our youth group. And then we'll see you Sunday morning, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, online. Hallelujah. You are again welcome. Go to our, our um, website, www.fwlf. LF, w, F, F, w, L, F, Faith, Love, Fellowship. Go to our website and there are study materials there. There's encouraging words. Tells you what's going on in the church. Amen. Be blessed. We'll see you next time. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.